So hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session on the preview of Blackboard Ultra. Today, we're specifically looking at the navigation, or as Blackboard calls it, the base navigation. But we'll talk more about that in just a moment. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Director of Faculty Development and Instructional Support with the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center at Northern Illinois University. And I'm really glad that you are joining us today or perhaps watching the recording online. Before we dig into Blackboard Ultra in particular, I do want to share that here at NIU, we have seen tremendous growth in the usage of Blackboard over the years. We've had Blackboard since 2011 or 2001, sorry about that, uh, and have seen a lot of growth, particularly since 2011. So we are currently in the fall of 2018 seeing 97 percent plus of our students using Blackboard for at least one course. And nearly 95% of those who teach here at NIU use Blackboard, again, for at least one course that they teach. Now, how you're using Blackboard may differ, but uh, we know based on these statistics that, again, Blackboard is seeing very high usage. That means that any changes to Blackboard are really significant to us as an institution because we see, um, so much relying on that as a system. We can't have any um, can't have any issues with Blackboard. We try to minimize those with the division of IT as much as we can, and we want to make sure we're delivering the best technology for our faculty and students to be using. Before we dig into Ultra and all of its features, I do want to point out that we have extensive uh, information and resources for you already, uh, with more to come. So if you go to niu.edu slash blackboard slash upgrade, and I'll put that in the text chat for you as well, you'll be able to review the information we have on some of these new features, both for the navigation we'll look at today, as well as the new course view. We have tutorials there as well, and more information about workshops that will be continuing throughout the summer and into the fall semester. So let's talk Ultra. Specifically, Blackboard Ultra, the Ultra experience broadly, is what Blackboard has branded this new initiative. Uh, Ultra is not new. It's been available for, well, nearly two years now. And it's come a long way since it was originally developed. The mentality, the approach that Blackboard is taking to Ultra is starting with a small core of essential features and then from there, building and adding new features and new functionality all the time. Um, so from two years ago, where Ultra was a very brand new product to now, it has really matured and developed extensively. So let's talk about Ultra compared to what we have now, uh, kind of like Coke Classic. What we have now is called Blackboard Original. So the original experience is familiar to all of you already and was introduced in 2010 here at NIU. And it hasn't really changed significantly since then. There have been new features added. There's been a little bit of a, a reskin, a rebranding to it. But largely, what we're using now is some pretty old technology in terms of the learning management system and online learning in particular. So the Ultra experience is a new user experience completely rebuilt that is modern, intuitive, and personalized. You'll hear me use those words a lot today. There are a lot of ways in which uh, Blackboard has created these opportunities to simplify workflows and allow you to, again, customize and personalize the way you interact with Blackboard based on your role and what it is that uh, you need from a learning management system. I'll also mention now in a couple of times that the Ultra version of Blackboard is more accessible for students who have disabilities. And it is a fully responsive design, which means that you will have a better experience logging in with your mobile browser on your smartphone than what you've had in the past with Blackboard. And then the overall design of Ultra is meant to be consistent with the other tools that Blackboard has created, such as Blackboard Collaborate that we're all in right now, as well as the, the mobile apps. There are three components 
to the Ultra experience. The first is the ultra based navigation, and that's what we're focusing on today. Um, we'll also touch on the fact that there is actually two different course views available with ultra. Uh, and we'll get a preview of the ultra course view in particular towards the end of our session today. So here is a first look at Ultra. We'll look at it in more detail as we go through some of the specific features you'll have available to you. But at first glance, you can tell that it is more modern, it is cleaner, more white space on the screen gives you a feeling of being more open and less closed in. It also makes it easier for you to read what's on the screen and find what it is you're looking for. I promise responsive on mobile devices. Here's an example of that showing what the screen looks like if you log in in the browser on a laptop versus a smartphone. The content is designed in such a way in Ultra so that anything you put in will reflow and fit ideally within a mobile device because we know that our students and honestly our faculty as well are more mobile now than ever before. One of the, I think, the strengths of Ultra, particularly of the navigation that we're going to look at today, is that it really changes the way that you interact with your courses. In the, in the past, I think Blackboard's very aware that for faculty and students both, their experience with the learning management system is fragmented because you work with individual courses separately. So you I doubt someone is teaching, this is probably a student, right? But you go into biology, separate from astronomy, separate from sociology. And yet, as a faculty member or as a student, you think about your courses, your teaching or your learning as a comprehensive set of responsibilities. Thus far, the learning management system has broken that up and made segments and, and boxes. What Ultra does is pulls that back together so even though you build your content or students submit their content, their assignments, separately in courses, Ultra's navigation does a lot to pull that together into single dashboards, single views where you can see how all of those components come together and then interact with them quickly and easily. One example that we'll look at quite heavily is the activity stream, which helps to highlight the most critical information for you across all of your courses. And in so doing that, helps you pri to prioritize where you need to spend your time, for both you and your students, in fact. The activity stream we'll talk about more is one of those elements that is customized and personalized to your role in the courses that you are teaching or to the courses that your students are taking. But more than that, more than just bringing together that quick information, Ultra also enables you to quickly take action on that critical information. So with one click, you can access an overdue assignment as a student in order to submit that. Or as a faculty member, you can access a, a, grade, a, a test that's been submitted in order to grade that and get the feedback back to students. All of that consolidated from across all of your courses and done in a way to prioritize the most critical information that you need to take action on. There's a lot that we're going to unpack today in this base navigation menu. So this gives you a teaser for everything that's coming up. And we'll walk through each of these sections in detail so that when you log into Blackboard following the upgrade, you'll have a sense of how to navigate and how to get around within the new Ultra experience. So first up is the institution page. I can't guarantee this is what it's going to look like when it's done. We've had some initial conversations though, and we're working out some designs with the division of, mark of enrollment management, marketing and communication. So the institution page gives you a high level view of the institution honestly, here at NIU, and some resources that will be available and customized for you as faculty versus what students will need in order to be successful in using Blackboard. So more to come on this. Um, this is not the final look or feel, but we're making some, some headway and hope to have some exciting uh, resources available for you to help you working with Blackboard going forward. 
The second place that we'll unpack here on this um, base navigation is the profile system. So Blackboard has a profile system currently, but it's a bit hidden and hard to find. With the new Blackboard Ultra base navigation on, your profile is the second link on that menu. It's really easy to find. So for faculty and students both, you can easily add a photo to your profile, and then that photo is seen across all of your courses. Uh, this profile photo, for example, will show up when students are posting on the discussion board so that they have some context for who they're talking to and how that uh, conversation unfolds. Your photo as the instructor of the course appears right on the front page of the course. Again, creating a, a presence for you, making you a real person to students and <laughs> helping them make those connections. There are some other aspects of your of or attributes that you can customize on this page. Others you won't, like your name and your email will still come from my NIU, just as they do now. As will your password, you can't actually change your Blackboard password here, but you can access some of the other information in order to build out a better, richer uh, profile for yourself and for your classmates or as a faculty member for your students to see in Blackboard Ultra. One other piece I'd like to highlight is so tiny you may not have seen it down here. So let's draw a big arrow. And that is this question mark in the lower right corner. In the Ultra Experience, whether you're in the base navigation or the course view, these question mark icons show up frequently throughout Blackboard. And if you click one, what that will do is take you to Blackboard's help documentation on this specific topic. So if I'm on my profile page and I'm not quite sure uh, what this means or how to edit something, I can click that help icon and I'll be taken not just to Blackboard's help site, but specifically to Blackboard's page on creating a profile. Makes it quick, easy, and simple for you to get to that help information when you need it. The next item on the menu that we'll take a look at is the activity stream. We all already talked about it a little bit in that high-level overview, but the activity stream is really going to be the powerhouse behind how you interact with Blackboard going forward. So here as the uh, faculty member teaching Geography 202, uh, definitely not my area of expertise, by the way, <laughs> um, but we'll pretend that I'm teaching World Regional Geography, among other courses. Right now, that's the only course that is active. But my activity stream is pulling together information from that course that is critical, things that I need to be aware of or know. So for example, you'll see on the activity stream, they're highlighting that a new test was added to the course. They're highlighting that there are new submissions to grade for one of the assignments. And if I scroll through further, I could see other things that were pertinent and relevant to me as the faculty member teaching this course, like um, any questions that students have posted on the discussion board or similar activities that are happening in my course. In fact, I really want to touch on this idea that the activity stream is telling me that there are new submissions to grade for one of the assignments in my course. Because not only do I see that there are new submissions, if I click onto this new submissions link, it's going to take me to that discussion. It slides right over on the, the panel here, and I'm directly into that grading workflow. So for anything that's gradable, when Blackboard shows you on your activity stream that there are new submissions to grade, you don't have to go back to the courses page, get into your course, go find that assignment or find that discussion or find the grade book. It's all right there for you with one click right from your activity stream. So looking at a student view, the student view is slightly different. It looks the same, right? This is still the <laughs> the general look and feel of the activity stream, but students will see things that are pertinent to them. So for example here, there's a past due assignment highlighted as important. The student has not submitted this, it is after the due date, and it's critical that they go in and make that submission if that's something that you allow in your, um, 
your syllabus and your policies for the course. Blackboard won't prevent them from making the late submission, but uh, it's up to you whether or not you grade it or, or award points. However, students at least can see that this is past due, that this is a problem for them. Blackboard also highlights things that are upcoming. So just below the, uh, the past due assignment, we see that there is an upcoming assignment. It's due in a few days, and Blackboard wants to be sure that as a student, I'm aware of this and can be working on that assignment. Blackboard also points out to me that there has been a new assignment added to the course. So if I'm not uh, paying attention to that, I need to know that um, this assignment has been posted. It gives me the due date, so I know how quickly I need to be acting on this. Similarly, Blackboard will also post uh, when new content has been added, if you've added a new folder or some files that students need to work with. And then lastly, I want to point out here at the very bottom, they're letting students know that there was a grade posted as well. So this student, Willa Cather, has a grade posted on a writing assignment. And again, with one click on any of these tasks, she can jump straight to that piece of content. So directly to the past due or upcoming assignment, directly to the new reading that was added to the course, or directly to view the grade that she received and the feedback for this assignment. So with that summary in mind, take a moment in the text chat to share what do you think will be the most helpful uh, feature or aspect of this activity stream. Give you a few minutes to, to post some thoughts. Melissa says, students finding due dates. I have more great news about due dates, but I think highlighting those past due or upcoming due dates, particularly across all of their courses, is really important. Andrea, in general, seeing the material that needs attention right away, yes. And Shane, I agree, being more, being able to efficiently access those is, is really critical. It's not just that you can see that there's something new or that there's something that needs your attention. It's that you can access it immediately. Those are three fantastic suggestions. The past due, yes, Candy, you can dismiss the, the notifications about past due assignments. You can't really dismiss the ones for upcoming or just in general the recent activity, but those do scroll down as more recent things are posted. Those take priority higher up. Yes, being aware of new things that are due, Emilio, I agree with you on that one as well. Absolutely. Well, you guys have A, been clearly paying attention, <laughs> <laughs> and B are are really on top of things. I agree with your um, your summaries here completely. Yes, and and Kishin being person oriented, I agree that um, what I like about the activity stream is that it is contextual to your role. So when you are a faculty member, it shows you the things that are pertinent to you and how you work with that course versus a student and what the student does with that course. So you're not getting reminders that there are due dates coming up. You hopefully know that there are due dates coming up, but you do get to hear and see when there are assignments that have been submitted. Yes, Linda, when they click view my grade, they're taken to the page where they can view your comments and your feedback, a rubric if you used one. It's not just that it toggles and shows them the, the grade itself. Excellent. Well, let's talk more about how Blackboard Ultra helps you be aware and stay up to date on what's going on in your courses. And while the activity stream by default consolidates a lot of really great information, you can customize what you see. So in the upper right corner here in, is a gear icon that I can use to access my notification settings. There are actually three different um, levels of settings, and we'll look at two of them. The first is the stream notifications. So you can customize by turning on or off 
what types of notifications you want to see in your activity stream. For example, one of the ones that I find to be a little frustrating as a, an instructor is seeing when new content is posted. Um, if particularly, you know, it's my course, I know I just added a file to it. I don't need a, a notification in my stream to show me that something was just added to my course. Uh, so that might be one that I turn off in those stream notifications, but I can use that to customize what I do or don't want to see. The second set of notification settings is for email. So one of the new features that you will probably become aware of really quickly is that Blackboard Ultra sends you an email digest every night with any new activity in your courses. If there hasn't been any activity, you won't get an email. But for anything that is new, then you'll get that email digest that summarizes what has been changed that day in your course? How many, what new discussion posts are there? If there are assignment submissions to grade? The same is true for you as well as for your students. So your students will receive daily notification emails with the digest of what has happened in their courses that they're taking. So on this notification setting page, you can again select or deselect what types of items you want included in that daily digest. If you don't want to receive any, you can deselect all of those checkboxes and you won't get those daily digest emails any longer. And if you really want to stay up to the minute on what's going on in your courses, you can change the setting from the once a day daily digest to being emailed right away anytime something changes in your course. The, uh, this is new, obviously. It's not something that we've had in the original experience. The third settings we're not going to look at uh, extensively, those are for push notifications. So if you are using the mobile app, the push notifications with uh, combined with the Ultra Course View can send you a, a pop-up notification on your mobile device through the app when any of those changes occur. So I have a quick poll because this is such a new feature and I'm just curious, what do you think of getting the daily email digests? So do you like that idea that, you'll, that you could receive those? Do you think that it's good for students to receive those? Or um, do you think that that's uh, maybe more than you want to see in your email? I'm just curious, again, because this is brand new and we have, uh, we have no idea what people are going to think of this. So right now I'll tell you it's running neck and neck on yes versus no. Linda, I agree, if students don't read their emails, it's not going to matter anyhow. Uh, Emilio, the students set up their own email notifications. By default, they're subscribed. They can choose to go in and unsubscribe themselves. I agree, so I'm gonna show the responses since so many of you have uh, answered. I'm kind of torn on it too. Um, but the good news is you get to decide whether you want to get them or not. So if you deselect all of those, then uh, you won't receive those. And Candace, you could set up a rule that would take it to a specific folder. I don't know if it'll make it to the spam folder. I hope not, <laughs> given that some people may want to actually see those. It'd be terrible for them to all be flagged as spam. Uh, so Shane and Fortunata both commented about the frequency. Right now, there's no way to customize the frequency of those emails. They come either right away when something is new is added to the course, or they come once a day as a daily digest. That's interesting feedback, though, about changing the, uh, the frequency of those and something we can take back to Blackboard as a suggestion. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for participating in my poll. So after the activity stream, we finally get to the course list. <laughs> which uh, perhaps is a little funny since when you first log into Blackboard, you may want to get to your courses right away, but it's just a click to get to see your courses. And here's an example of the new courses list. So my default landing page here are the current courses. These are anything that are in a current term, a current semester. You can see I'm teaching a number of courses, accountancy, art history, and geography, because I'm multifaceted. Um, there are a couple of things now on this, this new courses page that uh, I'd like to highlight for you. 
So one of those is you may notice that I have courses in both the original course view that are designated as original course view. And then I also have courses further down that don't mention being in the ultra course view. So I mentioned before that there are two possibilities for how courses are seen in Blackboard. And those are the original or ultra course view. So the original means you can keep your courses the same way they've always been, or the ultra course view lets you convert it to the shiny new version that we'll look at at the end today. But so courses that are still in the original course view are highlighted as such. You'll also notice that uh, I have a, I only see these current courses. If I wanna see, um, and so my list is probably shorter than what you're used to seeing. Many of you may have course lists that are 25 or 30 courses long or, or longer, given that we have right now nearly 10 years of courses that are in Blackboard. The good news is, even with these shorter lists, if you are someone who has a number of courses in any given semester, you can now favorite courses. So I've marked this Geography 202 Section 2 as a favorite by clicking that star icon, and then that pulls this course to the top of my list, makes it easier for me to find and access it quicker. Students can do the same to their course list. You can also search for your courses now. So if you know you're looking for a course from a past semester, you can search for it from right here and it will go through and find any of your courses uh, so that you can again get to that course quickly. You can also look at courses semester by semester. So here in this drop down, I can look for summer, spring, um, no fall courses yet, but I can look at courses term by term. I can also, of course, use these uh, back and forth arrows in order to find a specific term if I wanted to look at them that way. So I, in general, have to say I like how clean and simple this is. You can take some actions on your courses right from this page. So if you click the, um, the three dots, the ellipsis here menu. You can do things like making your course available or unavailable right from this page. And then of course you can jump right into your course. The student view is basically identical to this, but they'll of course see the courses they're taking, not the ones they're teaching. And for students, I really like the fact that this course list includes who's teaching the course. Because for some students that's mostly what they know about the course. And again, it deepens those connections between you and the course and the content. So some of you are already starting to um, comment or ask questions here in the, uh, the text chat, but please let me know what you think are some of the most exciting features of the, um, the text chat or the, the course list and how that will look. And Natalie, I'm doing a quick search here to make sure that I give you the right information. Um, it looks like right now the search filters based on whatever courses are currently being viewed. So if I want to view my past courses, I need to search for that and I need to select that term from the dropdown. So based on a quick test, um, if I'm on the current courses list and I search, it will only pull up the courses that are already on that list. I would need to say go to another term like the upcoming summer courses and retain that search in order to find them on that list. Not quite as cool as I was hoping and probably not quite as cool as you were hoping, but good to have the clarifications. So Kishan, we'll have more to talk about announcements in a little bit. I'm going to leave that um, leave that for now. So the courses, Candice, uh, lets you filter the courses you teach versus courses you might be taking, courses that are um, open versus private, which is kind of the new term for available and unavailable. So Tracy, the TAs would only see the courses that are associated with their ZID. So if they are, if they have teaching assistant responsibilities and they're enrolled in those courses with a ZID, then they would see those as well when they log in with their ZID. Uh, but 
if they're enrolled in those courses with their AID, they would need to log in separately with those two accounts to see those courses. Excellent. Well, lots of comments and feedback on this courses page. Uh, great questions. And I'll take Candace's and then I'll move on. So if you're looking for all the time that you taught Geography 202, so here's, here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> That's a interesting way for me to say it, I guess. So if I use the search and I do it from this page, the current courses is working in tandem with the search your courses. So those two items are working together. So it searches the current courses. If I moved to a different um, term, like if I moved to summer 2019, and did the search, those two are working in tandem. The filter, on the other hand, this drop down, I don't have a screenshot of it. Uh, that filter options are all courses, courses I teach, courses I'm taking, open courses, private courses, and courses that are hidden from me, meaning that you hid them from your view. So that filter doesn't actually work in tandem with the search, which is right next to it. So I understand why you might think that they go together. So moving ahead from the course list, let's look at the calendar. So again, like the activity stream, the calendar is going to pull everything from everywhere across your courses. So here on my calendar, you can see a number of different colors that designate different courses that I'm currently um, connected with. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the features that I really like is beyond the schedule view, where you can see everything on a day or a month view, you can also switch from the schedule view to a due date view here in the upper left. And then all that you see are all of the due dates across all of the courses that you're working with. Brian, really quickly, yes, students see this calendar as well. Uh, so you see your courses, students see their courses, and anything that's on the calendar from your course that you've put into your calendar for your course shows up on students' course cal students calendar views. So for example, things that you'll see here right now are due dates. So in Geography 202, there's a discussion on environmentalism. In our Blackboard Ultra Preview course, there's a state capital test coming up due, actually past due now. Um, so this is based on the, the items that go on the calendar in any course that you're associated with. Due dates are automatically added to the calendar in Blackboard. So when you put a due date on an assignment, a test, uh, uh, a graded discussion, those all automatically appear on the calendar. But you can add events manually as well. So for example, if I click the plus sign, I can add an event that would be kind of a single one-off item, although you can also add it with the ring schedule, I believe. I'll do a quick check. Yes, so that it repeats on a recurring event. You can also add your course schedule. So this actually is a feature I love, and I'll talk about more about why in a, uh, later when we get to the course view. But the course schedule, or honestly adding office hours, both work very similarly, where for a particular course, you put in what the start date of the course is, what the time is the course meets, and the specific dates that the course meets. You can either have it end after a certain number of recurrences, or you can have it end on a certain date. And then you can also specify the location of the course, where, what classroom are you meeting, or if it's an online course, maybe. And this then shows up on every day that you've specified for the entire semester giving a reminder to students that that is when their course is meeting, and they can actually see all of those together in one place. I'm going to get to Natalie's question in a second, because I have a slide on it. <laughs> in fact, it's right here. So in addition to being able to see that calendar in Blackboard, you can add your calendar to Outlook. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to set that feed up. 
but you do it once and then the connection will maintain and update the events on your Outlook calendar based on your Blackboard calendar for the past year and the upcoming year at a time. So it kind of rolls along uh, one year by year. So the share calendar uses iCal as the uh, feed type and you can set up an iCal feed to your calendar app on your Mac. You can set it up to a Google calendar, an Outlook calendar, as well as many other uh, products that are out there. So if you set up your course deadlines and your uh, class meetings, you can pull that all into your own Outlook calendar. And once you've done that for your courses, your students can pull that into their own calendar as well. Uh, again, a really great way to keep all of that together in one place so that you can more effectively manage your schedule. The one downside that I have heard is that you cannot uh, pick and choose which courses come into that iCal feed. So uh, if you set up that feed, it will be all of your courses. Uh, you can't turn any of them off. But at the very least, it's a quick and easy way to get that information to your Outlook calendar if that's something you're interested in. So thank you for your patience, Natalie. <laughs> I, I knew I had a slide, so I just wanted to get there. Tracy, were you trying to draw my attention to that, or did you have another question? Since you put your hand down, I think you're trying to, to do that. All right. So the calendar is really exciting. You can access it from within a course or from this, um, this global-based navigation. But I also want to talk about messages. Again, messages exist in our current version of Blackboard, uh, but we've discouraged them for a number of reasons, mostly because it's not ever obvious that you have messages. So if you and students use the messages tool, uh, it would be really easy to miss a, a message and then a student thinks they've contacted you or you think you've contacted a student and you never um, actually get that information to one another. But with messages now on the global navigation of Ultra, it makes it much easier for you to see and keep up with those communications. So here is my messages page, again, pulling in all of my current spring 2019 courses. And I can see quickly for each course whether I have any messages, and in particular, when I have a new message. So messages are essentially an integrated built-in communication, almost like an email system. Here are the messages for one of my courses. I sent a message to Thomas Jefferson because he was behind on his classes, and Louisa Alcott wants to come in and meet me because she has a question about the upcoming assignments. I can also, from this page, respond to her. If I click on her, assign her message, then I get a side panel here where I can write a message back to her. And one of the things that I love for Ultra courses, only courses using the Ultra course view, by the way, not the ones that are using our current original course view, I can send an email of this message as well. So while this message lives in Blackboard, I can also then have that go out to um, be sent to the uh, both the recipient and myself um, a message, an email. When I create a new message, I also, as the instructor, have a choice on whether or not I want to allow students to reply to the message. The, again, the nice thing about this is those replies stay in Blackboard. Um, so one of the comments we get all the time is, what happens to my email and where does it go? Um, so having that record in Blackboard helps. If you reach out to a student because maybe they've not submitted something, they haven't been coming to class, you have that record here. And then the, the last thing I want to clarify is that when you're using messages with the original course view, which you can see here, I have a course in our current view of Blackboard, um, those messages can't be sent via email. So those do show up in the messages uh, global navigation area, but they don't get a copy sent via email. So it might be a little bit harder for students to um, know that they have a message. For an original course, you may want to still continue using the send email feature. But for an ultra course, there actually uh, is no send email feature. So sending a message and turning on the email would be the way to send an email to your students. 
So I do see, uh, I know Melissa was asking, can messages be turned off or set to forward to your general email? So messages are going to come to your NIU email account uh, if the students have sent it via email. Um, otherwise, you would find those messages in the messages tab in your navigation. For an original course, you can turn off messages. If you go to the customization and tool availability, then that can be uh, actually turned off for that course. Uh, and then another question, can you send emails to individual students? So yes, when you type a name, when you go to actually select recipients, you can send a message to one student, to multiple students, or there's an option to send it to the entire class at once. So this is a, a great way to contact, again, one student or uh, several students if you needed to all at once. Great question. So then we're look at grades. Again, like the other tools, grades on the base navigation is going to pull in grades from all of your courses onto a single page. As the uh, faculty member teaching courses, you will see a record of uh, how many students have submitted a grade, uh, an assignment or how many are missing, how many there are for you to grade, and potentially then if you have um, here this grade pill is what Blackboard's calling it, gives me an overall average for how students are doing in this course. There's one just off here from a previous term where it's green and students were doing better, apparently. Um, but my, my students this time are hanging in there. They're not doing too terribly, I guess. So a few things I want to highlight with this grades page is, again, I can see how many students have submitted a particular assignment. So the cost management plan for my accountancy course, one of three students has submitted it, which also then tells me I have one to grade. So I haven't graded that one yet, it's still ready to grade. For my globalization writing assignment for the Geography 202, you'll see that four submitted it, and it's past due, which is why it's now red, and 12 are missing, meaning that 12 people didn't submit this by the deadline. I have some, uh, <laughs> some serious conversations to be having with those students. But then to the right, you'll see that I have four to post. This is a little bit different um, for an ultra course, meaning a course using the ultra course view. Grades now have a grade and then post workflow. We'll talk more about that in um, a, a later workshop on the course view. I would encourage you to attend. But essentially, you control when students see your grades when you're using the ultra course view. So this means I've graded those four, but I haven't posted them so that they're visible to students yet. And again, I can click to post grades and do it right from here. For some of the other items on here, if I wanted to, for example, grade this discussion, I have five to grade right now on environmentalism in Russia. If I click on that discussion, I can be taken directly to the grading page, just like I did from the activity stream. So it's not just, Blackboard isn't just summarizing my uh, grades here, but giving me the opportunity to jump right in and begin grading from here. So I get one view of all of the grades across all of my courses. As a faculty member, I can see what is ready to be graded. As a student, I would see all of the grades and feedback I've received in any of my courses, including those that are still pending, meaning that uh, my faculty member has not yet graded them. So Donnie, how do you ask rubrics? Um, that's a little bit specific for our session today, but essentially when you clicked to grade one of these students, the rubric we uh, visible in the grading panel. So you don't see it here because this is my view of all of the grades, but when I went into grade a single student, that's where I would access the rubric. Yet Natalie, being able to control when students see the grade is, is really, really kind of cool. The workaround right now is uh, I've <laughs> worked with faculty to hide the column from students, you enter all of the grades, then you show the column to students again. Uh, this is a little bit similar, but this way, the column stays visible to students the entire time. You 
do all of your grading, and then you post it when you're ready for students to see it. And then the very last thing we'll talk about with the navigation is the tools area. So tools lists a number of, of tools that you might access elsewhere within Blackboard. Because we don't have the across the top, there are some features there like the content collection that now are in this tools area. So if you've used the content collection for files, you would click tools to get to it. The same is true of portfolios. If you have students building portfolios, they would come to tools in this navigation menu and then go to portfolios. So take a minute now that we've seen all of these features in the base navigation and tell me what your favorite features are that you've seen so far. So Kishan, um, the way you manage groups is different. We're not going to get into that today, but we do cover that a little bit in the, um, the Ultra Course View workshop, as well as that might be something you want to come in and talk to us individually. You like the grading option and posting grades. Chang likes messages. The flow is going to be better, I think. Um, in the base navigation, it's almost perfectly intuitive what you do where, and when you click on something, it takes you exactly where you think you should go. Um, now, it's also just an aggregator, right? There's not a lot that you actually do in those spaces. You're not building in those spaces. You're seeing the results of what you've built elsewhere. All right, lots of, lots of cool things. Lots of people like grading. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a few minutes and really quickly preview the ultra course view. I want to be clear, we're not going to get into a lot of details on what ultra courses are like. Today, our focus was to really look at this base navigation and how Blackboard's bringing that information together. But I kind of want to um, pique your curiosity enough to maybe attend one of our workshops on the ultra course view so that you can learn more, maybe get your hands uh, started actually building a course in the ultra course view as well. So the, again, to make sure everyone's on absolutely the same page, the original course view is still going to be the default for all of the courses once we turn on the ultra experience. So for this summer, for this fall, your, when you request your courses and you have those in Blackboard, they are going to be in the Ultra Course View. That is the same experience you've had already with courses. Nothing changes to the features or the workflows you already are familiar with. However, you will have the option to convert your course and turn on the Ultra Course View. So this is optional. You can even try it out before you commit, and I'll talk about that too before we leave today. It is similar to the base navigation in that it is more streamlined, it's more intuitive, it's more open and clean. It is also responsive for use on mobile devices. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, it started with a very small feature set and continues to grow. Um, at this point, there's almost parity in terms of the major features between what's available in original and ultra. They might work differently in ultra, but most of the features are there. And they're regularly adding new functionality and new enhancements to existing functionality on, quite honestly, a monthly basis. So this ultra course view will become an option once we've completed the upgrade, which I haven't said is over Memorial Day weekend. We don't have a specific date and time from the Division of IT yet on exactly when that's going to happen, uh, but it will be over Memorial Day weekend. And that's when the Ultra Course View will become available to you. So we'll look at a few key features, such as the navigation, adding content, a little bit on grading, and then some on the analytics too. So up close and personal, this is the new Ultra course view. So Chang, you mentioned that Blackboard Collaborate is still available. It is. Here within a course, I have Blackboard Collaborate in this details and action section. So I can have all of my students join the course room or I can schedule sessions for specific dates and times. But more broadly, 
one of the things I really want to point out, I, I alluded to back when we were on the calendar, once you add your course schedule to the calendar, it shows up here on your course page. So every time students enter the course, they're reminded when this course meets, where it meets. Um, so there's no excuses for not knowing. And they can help to make the connection between, oh, that's my 9 o'clock class, and be able to see uh, the two together. You'll also notice, because I'm the instructor of this course, that my photo is here in the upper left, uh, along with my, my name. Um, other things that we really want to look at. So you'll notice that the content is all in a single page. You don't have menus. You don't have separate pages for course information or assessments. These folders, these modules, if I go back a moment, open and close. So those arrows open and expand these files. But the, the cool thing for you building the courses is you can add any content or assessment exactly where you want it. So instead of using the menu to add an item, and then it goes to the bottom of the page, and then you drag it back up to where you want to go, you can put it exactly where you want it to go. It seems like a no-brainer. It will make it much quicker for you to be able to build your courses in the future. This is the view of the new gradebook. So Blackboard does change the name from Grade Center to Grade Book. I'm not sure why, but they do. There are two views to the gradebook. This is the item list view. So this is similar to the grades page that we saw in the base navigation, where it lists each of the assignments or, or grades, essentially, that are in my course. And again, summarizes the status of those, so I can see how many are uh, graded or how many are graded and need to post. I can also see how many are submitted or missing. I can see the due date for every single one of these to keep myself um, on track. And then I can post the grades from here as well. Uh, but this isn't the only view. In the upper right left corner is the toggle to go from list view to student view. And this isn't a student list view, I guess, technically. What this does is it gives you the spreadsheet view that you're used to seeing and shows each of the students and each of their their grades for all of the assignments. One of the other things I really like, just that positive af affirmation, is this in-class activity is completely submitted. All the students have submitted it. All of the grades are posted. So I get a little complete and a check mark, which feels good. It lets me know that this is done. And I can work towards having all of those graded. You'll also see that my new submissions have a grade now um, affiliated with them. These, I kind of, the, the writing assignment, I kind of cheated. I entered grades before our submissions were done. So that looks a little weird. But most of these, when students submit, you'll get a grade now. You can jump right in to grade all of those in place. I'm seeing lots of, <laughs> lots of love for the grade book here. One other thing that uh, I haven't talked about yet is this um, search grade book feature. So in the upper right, there's a search field. And that search will let me pull up any assignment. So I can look for, if I have a lot of columns while I'm in this view, I can search and get just the column name. And I can also search by student name to see just that student's row of the gradebook as well. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to work out um, what you see when you want to see it and what you want to focus on. And again, you can switch back and forth between these views anytime you want. There's a lot to the gradebook. And honestly, uh, this is where, because there are new features that have been added in Ultra, there are also some that haven't been developed yet for original. Um, this is going to eventually be its own workshop <laughs> on this fall on just navigating the two differences. If you want to know more in the meantime, I would say set up a consultation with us, and we can go over them side by side. Uh, yes, Francis, it does. Once you've set up their overall grade, it will track their current grade um, as they go. And one of the other features I don't have visual a visual for 
uh, that I would be remiss if I didn't mention is automatic zeros. The gradebook will have the ability to automatically assign a zero to students when they've missed a due date. You can turn it on or turn it off, but that will be on by default. We've got so much to still look at. Um, course announcements. Uh, I think, Keishan, you were the one who had asked about announcements. When you post an announcement in a course, the next time the student logs in, in an ultra course, that will be a pop-up that they have to see and click dismiss to move on from. The trade-off is course announcements can't be sent via email, but they will show up on the activity stream and in the Daily Digest email if students receive those, and they'll see it as a pop-up when they enter the course. So a little different, uh, I've been suggesting sending a message and an announcement if you really want to make sure students see it. So you send a message to their email and then also post it as an announcement. I'm hoping that they add that functionality back in a future release. I'm with you, Andrea. I don't know why they took that away. There are more embedded analytics. So for example, this is an assignment, I can see an overview of the submission activity, how many students have opened, accessed, started, or submitted this. I can see a graph on grade distribution. There's more detail below the fold here on how long students took to actually work on this between when they opened it and when they submitted it. Far more that Blackboard is continuing to develop around analytics, but some really great uh, starts with some of these features. And then to wrap up our discussion of the ultra course view, I do want to point out that we, um, you will be able to convert your courses. So you could start from scratch or you can take your original course and convert it. Once you've done that conversion, you can preview it before you commit. So you get to sort of see what your course would look like if you converted it to ultra and then decide to move forward or go back to original. You could even try this in a shell uh, if you want to practice and fully convert it um, in order to, to get that view before things uh, are committed. Once you've committed, you can't go back. So it's definitely worth seeing the original first. Shane, yes, you can copy an original course into Ultra. So you keep writing about your most exciting features. I think you guys liked the grading the best. That was my... <laughs> my takeaway from all of the buzz there in the text chat but please you know share any other thoughts you have around the ultra course view i do want to reiterate that there's more information on our website niu.edu slash blackboard slash upgrade that's where you can find out more about all of these features you can watch tutorials specifically on the ultra course view and find out about uh, workshops coming up for um, the new Ultra Experience and the course view. We have 18 sessions that we've scheduled from April to August. Obviously, some of those are already done. But if you go to go.niu.edu slash ultra workshops, then you can, oh, there's an S on that, so don't click that one. That's not going to take you anywhere. You want to go to this one in order to see what else is coming up and register for a workshop. And finally, the two next ones are a preview of the course view like this online, but we'll really dig into looking at the ultra course view and some of the changes. Or on May 20th, we have a hands-on workshop where you can come together and actually try it out in person. So I encourage you to go take a look, maybe sign up for something else and learn a little bit more about ultra. Uh, Emilio, I did see that you had a last minute question here about using a master course. Yes, you will be able to still use a master course to combine multiple sections. Um, Keishan, the taking away the email for announcements, I should add as well, uh, and I believe, let me check before I say this, um, that in the push notifications from the app, uh, nope, announcements aren't there yet either, but they're on the roadmap so that when a new announcement is posted, they at least get a push notification from the app maybe in the future. It's not as good as a send text option, but uh, it's getting closer maybe. I would say the, the biggest thing about Ultra, it's constantly changing. There will always be new things coming. So Mark, um, the Ultra will be available to campus after our upgrade on May, over Memorial Day weekend. I don't have a specific date but Memorial Day weekend is uh, when that's coming. And Tamara, you had your hand up? 
I think someone did. Nope. Okay. Well, with that, um, I want to thank you all for your time today and for digging into this. I know we went a few minutes over with all of the questions, but uh, I'm really grateful for the, the time you spent, and I hope you look forward to Ultra. Bye.